everybody. My name is David. Today we're going to be talking about air pollution. Now, in order to show how air pollution works, we're going to run a little demonstration to examine the role of CO2 in the greenhouse effect. All right, for this experiment, what we're going to need is two Erlenmeyer flasks, as well as two temperature sensors, two round bottom beakers filled with 150 milliliters of water, a light source, as well as Alka-Seltzer tablets. What we're going to be doing for our experiment is we're going to take our Erlenmeyer flask and fill it with 150 milliliters of water. Now that we have our water in our Erlenmeyer flasks, what we're going to do is we're going to be measuring the temperatures of the air inside of them. So we have these temperature sensors. Now, the temperature sensors are going to shoot the data right over to my fancy little computer here. And we're going to be collecting the data and analyzing it real time. Now, next, what we have to do is we have to make sure we turn on both lamps at the same time. That way, they're starting off at the same temperature. So now that we have our lamp on and both uh, setups are receiving um, solar radiation, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cap up the one with just plain water to trap the air in there. And for the other one, we're going to add carbon dioxide by adding Alka-Seltzer tablets. So we'll put two of those in here, cap this one up, and we'll let the experiment run for a little bit so that way we can collect some data. All right, so now that it's been a couple of minutes, let's take a look at our experiment. So over here, our oxygen one clearly is normal as it was. And our other beaker has a lot of bubbles. So that's good, that's what we wanted. Those are the CO2 bubbles. Now, let's take a look at the temperatures. So it looks like the Erlenmeyer flask with the oxygen has about eh, 71.1, yeah, around 71.1 degree. All right, and now let's take a look at the Erlenmeyer flask with the carbon dioxide. Okay, so it looks like we're finishing up at around 73.4, 73.5, yeah, around 73.5 degrees. So it's about a three degree difference. That's a pretty substantial difference considering they started off right at the same. So clearly the temperature with, uh, in the beaker with the CO2 has risen a lot faster than the one with the oxygen. And in fact, if we were to let these systems continue, we would see a, a lot larger of a trend as they start to separate out in temperature. The same thing happens on a planetary scale. The sun acts like our lamp. It sends heat energy down to the earth. What ends up happening is that heat energy enters through our atmosphere, which are the clear uh, glass walls of our container, and it bounces off of the surface of the Earth. Now, some of that heat energy returns to space, but others get caught by those greenhouse gases. So, as a result, what ends up happening is the temperature of the Earth ends up rising. So thank you guys for joining me in lab today. Uh, that was our greenhouse in a beaker experiment. If you guys want to do that at home, go ahead and check on our website, most.org, to find instructions on how to do the activity yourself. There's also a sheet you can print out if you guys want to take temperature measurements and to see if you can measure the effect of the greenhouse gas yourself.